Welcome to Cook UK. My name is David Marks and I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect bubble and squeak. This is a traditional British dish that is made from mashed potato. Here we've got about 400 grams of mashed potato from the day before. And traditionally it's made with cabbage. We've got a Savoy cabbage bits here which we've shredded. These have been cooked because uh, they've been used, they've been stored from the previous day. Um, but a normal cabbage would do just as well. We've got about a tablespoonful of butter here, which we'll use to fry the bubble and squeak in. And that's all that's required for your traditional bubble and squeak. Um, we're actually going to add a little bit of uh, streaky bacon, which we fried off and chopped up here. But you don't have to do that at all. Um, you can add almost anything you like to bubble and squeak. Um, the Irish have a recipe that's very similar. Um, the only thing that they do is they add onions which they slice finely to it. That's called colcannon. I believe the uh, Scottish have an un almost unpronounceable version of bubble and squeak, which is also very similar. If you have any vegetables left over other than the cabbage, then add them to this as well. Carrots do, do very well, they add a little bit of colour. Peas, the same. Any vegetable will do. You can also add, if, you, if, you, if you're sort of clearing up after the Sunday lunch, save that bit of beef, save that bit of ham, save that bit of lamb, and simply chop it up, put it in the fridge, and then when you're cooking bubble and squeak the next Monday evening, add that little bit of um, meat to it as well. It would absolutely taste delicious. So, let's just get on with cooking our bubble and squeak. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to melt our butter in the pan. Now we're using quite a small pan here, frying pan, because we haven't got all that much bubble and squeak to make. And we want the bubble and squeak to be about two to three centimetres high. So if you've got a lot, then use a big pan. If you haven't got so much, then use a small pan. There's nothing to say you have to use a small frying pan either. Um, you can, uh, you can, excuse me, uh, you can use just a normal pan um, just as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook this off for about four minutes, this um, cabbage, and just give it a little bit of colour because colour is very important to the bubble and squeak. When this dish is cooked, it's going to be browned on both sides. We don't want any wishy-washy whiteness to this. This is a, a crispy outside bubble and squeak with lots of soft potato inside. So what we'll do is we'll cook this for another three and a half minutes or so, and then we'll get back to you and continue the recipe on from there. So our cabbage has been frying now for about five minutes, and that's given it a little bit of colour. So what we're going to do is we've got our mashed potatoes here and we're going to simply pour the cabbage onto there. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil or just generally some oil into the pan as well there, let that heat up. And we'll add our bacon as well. And then with our hands we're just going to mix this all up together so it's reasonably mixed. Uh, it's not essential to get it completely evenly mixed, but uh, do as well as you can. You can do this in the pan, uh, a lot of recipes recommend it, but you'll find that uh, it's extremely difficult to um, mix up the ingredients evenly. They'll be very unevenly made, uh, very unevenly mixed. So this is by far the, the best method. It may be a little bit mucky, but who cares? One wash of the hands. Um, so now what we're going to do, is we're going to put the potato mix in the oven and we're going to firm it down like that and we use a spatula to just firm it down again we want that to be in very good contact with the bottom of the pan and the more you firm it down the easier it will be when it comes to turn your bubble and squeak because that is, is, is going to be a slight problem but if you firm it down like this it doesn't matter if it's uneven slightly 
then you'll find it a lot easier to turn. So we're going to cook that for about four minutes on that side, and we will take a peek with the spatula, just lift it up, just to see when it's brown. And when it's brown, we'll turn it over. So we'll let that cook, and then when it's brown, we'll come back to you and show you how to turn it over. So we reckon this has been cooking for about four minutes now, and we reckon the underside should be about brown. It turns out not to be brown, we'll simply turn it twice, so it's not a problem. Now, it is quite difficult to turn it over if you try and do it with a spatula, so what we suggest is you take a plate, do a turn like that, and actually, we've got that perfect there. I don't know whether you can see that, that's perfectly brown, that's exactly how your uh, uh, bubble and sweep should be. So now what we do is slide it back into the whoops, slide it back into the frying pan again, trying not to break it. And that should take about another two minutes to cook, and the bubble and the squeak will then be ready. So we'll cook that for another couple of minutes, then we'll plate it up and come back to you with the final product. So there you have it, the perfect bubble and squeak. Lovely and dark brown on both sides and done to a perfect turn. Now you can find this recipe with lots of pictures and more helpful hints and tips at our cookery website which is www.cookuk.co.uk So enjoy your bubble and squeak and we hope to see you at Cook UK soon. Thanks very much.